Hi everyone. Hopefully uh, everyone's sort of connecting still at the moment, but hopefully you can hear me um, and, and I'm screen sharing currently, but you can probably see me a little bit as well. Um, just before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things really quickly. If you can just uh, try to remain on mute um, as I mute Jade quickly. Sorry, Jade. And Bailey, mute Bailey for sure. Um, so yeah, so if you just stay on mute and, and there'll be a chance for questions um, and there'll be some time at the end. Uh, if, if you've got any questions while we're going through uh, this evening's sort of topics and, and the agenda, feel free to chuck them in the chat. Um, and I'll, I'll quickly go around and, and unmute these people, but I'm joined tonight by a couple of our Junior Blues uh, committee or working group team that, that are integral to our operations and and you know you you will have seen their faces throughout tryouts and uniform fittings and all of the likes and everything it takes to get our teams on court um we we, we couldn't do it without them so um firstly for those that haven't uh met this person i'd like to introduce uh jade jaberka jade if you want to unmute yourself and hopefully you'll show up on the screen yeah. hi everyone and uh, we're also joined by, where I am, Mel? Can you unmute yourself, Mel? Yeah, there you are, asked to unmute. We're also joined by Mel Raponen, who's been a committee member and, and a working group member for many years, since well before I got here. Thanks for, thanks for joining tonight, Mel. You're still, there you are. Can you unmute? No, nah, that's all right. And, uh, and then also joined, uh, we're also joined tonight by Bailey Roberts, who you'll all become extremely familiar with and i'm asking him to unmute as well big big bailey get up on the screen it's good to be here so bailey will obviously become the main point of contact for all the team managers uh from next tuesday onwards and and uh he'll be uh yeah he'll be he'll be your best contact uh, in the office and, and he'll be handling the administration of the junior blues so he'll be working with the with the team the working group the coaches and and um and and especially you guys and the team managers. So we'll make a start uh, on, you know, on our official kind of uh, part of the evening, getting through our agenda. But firstly, um, firstly, thank you to all of you for taking on this role. It's a pretty thankless sort of role and Jade and Mel will speak to that more later on, but uh, it is a fun role. We hope that, you you know, you're enjoying it and it's, it's, it's an opportunity to contribute to your most likely your, your, your son or your daughter's team and um, help, you, you know, help them and help the other kids enjoy their blues experience. And it's, it's, it's a vital role within our association without our team managers and having volunteers in that space. Um, we, we couldn't operate because um, we love our coaches, but, but a lot of the time they just want to rock up and coach and they don't want to think about finances and, and the communication side of things. And, they're, they're subject matter experts on the court and, and that's why we're you know, very lucky to have them, but, but we're here to support them and, and to support the players. So firstly, thank you very much for, for putting your hand up and, and taking on this role with, with the uh, Junior Blues program in, in 2021, 2022. Our agenda, oh, why is it going one at a time? Damn it. Our agenda for tonight, uh, we've got, I'm gonna just take us through our vaccination update really quickly that we, uh, that we sent out yesterday. Um, that, that'll just be a really brief kind of a statement. If there's any questions about that, we can talk about that. But just a, a brief statement and a bit of an update from, from our coaching coordinators as well. We'll quickly go through the roles of the team manager, but not in a great amount of detail because there's a document that goes into a fair bit of detail that you'll get as a part of your team manager's pack, um, which will be sent out either later tonight or, or early tomorrow morning. We'll go through the communication of, of the team managers and what that looks like, a bit of a uniform and merchandise update. Also some, uh, some information, just a, a reminder and the coaches and team managers screening. Info about the score bench and shot, clear, uh, shot clock, um, an update and, and some just a refresh on our rego fees. Some information for you guys about your merchandise and your uniform and what's sort of expected in that space. Uh, a little bit of discussion around our winter and summer competitions and, and that sort of compulsory enrolment into those programs. Uh, a mouth guard update, which, which um, 
which Mel will, will handle. And then uh, Jade will also jump in when we talk about the team managers packs in terms of the financial side of things, because that's probably one of the biggest duties that a team manager undertakes throughout the season. Talk briefly about venue passes and then we'll finish up with the competition calendar and, and some key dates to mark in, in your calendars. Alrighty. Oh, and photo dates. There we go. That's why I hate the, the button clicker uh, for each point. We, we do have some tentative dates for, for photos. Um, they're still be still to be confirmed, but you can put those sort of tentatively in your in your calendar, pencil those in and, and start preparing uh, families for those dates. So really quickly, our vaccination update that was sent out, uh, obviously on Monday, uh, November 22nd, the VJBL communicated that uh, you know, it was it was mandatory in in their competitions and their leagues and events that they manage um, that uh, double vaccination over over twelve years and, and two months, uh, and, and that all people entering the stadiums uh, that are uh, you know hosting VJBL needed to be able to provide proof of this. Um, so that that takes place, or this that that comes into effect essentially from December third. Um, but for our boys teams, it will come into effect this Friday, unfortunately, at, at Casey Stadium. Um, at our stadium, we're in a position where we manage the centre and we can still come under the community sport exclusion. Um, and that's where it's, it can be a little bit confusing. But currently, as it sits, and I know a few of you have reached out to me and, and reached out to coaches and coaching coordinators in the last couple of days, we want to make it really clear that at Frankston we will be or we will do our best to be as inclusive as possible. And that what that means is our, our domestic competitions will still operate under this um, community sporting exclusion. So there's there's no need for proof of vaccination on on you know at your domestic competitions, and there's no new, no need for proof of double vaccination at VJBL trainings. Um, Currently, that, that's how that currently sits. And, and if, obviously, if there's any changes, then we'll provide an update. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing at this stage that we can do about the VJBL competition venues because we don't manage that league and we don't want to manage that competition. So that will stand. In terms of the actions that we will be taking before Christmas, there'll be no... There'll be no cuts made to teams or changes made to squads based on vaccination status. Uh, unfortunately, those players that aren't double vaccinated over the age of 12 and two months won't be able to play in uh, those games, but we won't be cutting them from the team and looking to replace them. And we may never do that, you know, but we, we definitely don't want to rush to do that. We want to give this as long as possible for it to sink in, um, for people to, you know, sort of advocate for Basketball Victoria to advocate with the, the Department of Health and say, hang on, you know, let's rethink this a little bit because their stance, um, you know, the Department of Health's stance has been fairly clear on community sport being an exclusion. And then it's the venues now that have have put in this this 12 and two months uh, sort of mandatory uh, double vax uh sort of limit and and we need to give that as much time as possible so for anyone that takes questions about this and and has players in their team that are, are not vaccinated and are over that 12 and two months um, unfortunately they're not going to be able to play until they are double vaccinated but they will still be able to be a part of the team they'll still be able to participate in trainings and 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 everything apart from official bjbl games whether that's grading or championship phase and that's that's really the only update we have at, at this stage on that and we'll reassess in the new year um, so jade thanks jade good question uh no it's not no it's not it's not the team manager's responsibility uh to check vaccination status we're, we're not we're not putting that out there as, as a responsibility for team managers or for coaches uh, it's not it's not our responsibility it's it's on the individual families and on the parents if if they can't enter venues and they aren't available for games because they can't enter the venues and they know that ahead of time then that conversation will soon be started um, but we're not going to we don't at this stage at Frankston Stadium have to request that from them um, but if they are forthcoming with that information it, it will it will soon become very clear um, but what we will continue to do is just continue to update our position on this, which is, as I just stated, we're not going to exclude people from being a part of the club. Um, and, and we hope that, yeah, in the new year, something changes to allow for those players to 
either join and begin playing or, or maybe they've got vaccination um, bookings or dates in the future and, and they might be able to join in at that stage. But we can't foresee the future. What we can say is that we won't be restricting those players from still being a part of those squads and those teams um, for as long as we possibly can. Alrighty, moving on. So roles of a team manager. We've got team administration. And again, like I said, I'm just going to rattle through these pretty quickly because there's more detail in our, in our document that will come out as part of the kit. Team administration, team finances, which, which Jade will take everyone through in a second. <clears throat> Uniforms coach assistance, communication, camps and tournament entry, and then code of conduct, problem solving and, and dispute resolution. <clears throat> You've probably heard about our team managers pack. This will, will, this will be sent out by tomorrow at the latest, just updating some dates and things like that in spreadsheets. What you'll receive is uh, a scoring roster, which is really helpful. Uh, a cash flow template, a template which, which Jade's gonna talk a little bit about now. And, uh, and then also your codes of conduct uh, document that all players, uh, coaches and, and parents will, will, need to, will need to sign and, and to return back to uh, the FEBA office. So uh, Jade, I might, I might unscreen share for a second and, and you should be able to screen share if you've got a, a document, I think you wanted to quickly present about how you, uh, as a really experienced team manager and a bit of a guru in this space, how you go about managing your team's cash flow throughout the season. So. I'll stop sharing and hopefully you can unmute. <laughs> Sorry guys, there this is my first time actually sharing the document. So bear with me. Well, I think I've managed to share it, Jared. Can, it, can everyone well see it? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> um, so uh, part of the role of being the team manager is every week we have to pay a match fee payment, um, which uh, covers costs for ref referees, association staff and venue hire. This season, which has been a little bit different to past seasons, it actually now includes spectator fees. Um, across all venues, we have a, um, an amount per week, whereas last year we had different amounts per venues, which was a bit of a pain. So it's nice to see that uh, we're all aligned uh, this season. So some of you might be aware um, of kind of where your team might sit in, uh, in, in grading. Um, the BJ, uh, BJL games are the 60 minute schedule, which is $125 per week. So I would be charging your parents $15 per week. Uh, if you're aiming uh, for VC, it's $140 per week and the cost is uh, $15 per player. Please keep in mind, this is for a team of 10 uh, when, I, when I say cost per player. So if you've only got nine, you're going to have to divide the 140 by nine to charge the approx the amount per week to make sure that you have enough uh, in your bank account or in cash to pay. Um, so team managers will pay this um, amount per game. So depending on the venue, when you actually walk in and check in, you actually might pay for it um, at the front or there might be a little bit off to the side where you will have to pay for it and also sign in as a team manager. Jared, will, that will be in the team manager pack. Please make sure that you get your new coaches to sign in as well because if they don't, we will get fined. Um, I find that asking parents for upfront payments actually makes my life a little bit easier and, uh, and it also actually makes life easier for parents because I'm not hassling them uh, every week. And now that some teams can be paying up to $140 per week, we like to have, you know, most of the parents pay up front. So, you know, we might have eight or nine, eight or nine weeks of uh, game payments in our bank account or in cash ready to pay um, every week. Um, I actually set up a bank account purely for basketball, doesn't have any any personal transactions in it. I find this uh, easier, it's easier to reconcile. I don't have any um, personal transactions. Parents can pay into the account. Um, if, look, it's definitely individual. You don't have to do that. Some, I know some team managers still to this day still get it paid into their personal account and, and reconcile it that way. 
Um, as I said, it is an individual choice, but for reconciling and I just find it much easier to have one dedicated uh, bank account. Um, I have asked parents to pay $100 upfront. Um, I think so far, I think I've had six out of my uh, nine parents, because I'm obviously one of them, um, have paid their uh, $100. I've had one pay in cash, which is, which is fine, but um, I do prefer uh, EFT. Um, because most stadiums now, I think actually, I think it's all stadiums now, Jared, will only accept payment by credit card. Is that correct? Not cash? Uh, I'm honestly, I'm not sure uh, on a Friday night whether it'll be some, I think some will still need to collect cash just the way that okay. they're set up. Some are okay. playing out of schools and things like that. The, okay. the one thing that that has changed is that VJBL requires all associations to have team pay or to have a team pay account. Um, okay. That doesn't that that doesn't need to be in place by grading phase one, but by the championship phase. So you know, okay. term two yep. of next year, okay. we will have to have a team pay account set up at the stadium, uh, yep. the office, and uh, okay. and and our team managers can can access and can use that as well. Okay, so at this stage, if someone if someone pays in cash, it'd probably be a good idea to have, just have some cash in your little in your little envelope for paying if need be. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so, in relation to the cash flow spreadsheet, which you guys will receive uh, tonight or tomorrow, um, what I do is I obviously type in uh, on the left on the first column, I type in the the kids' names. Um, and when I receive cash or an EFT, and you'll see a little thing here, um, I actually put a comment um, on the cell relating to, obviously this might be the uh, practice game that we had last week, for example, and um, I don't know, maybe myself, I paid $100, and I've put a little comment in here that I paid $100 on the 29th of the 3rd, 21, obviously that's not quite the case but you get the idea um, I find that if I put a comment in here then I can also relate that back to the bank transactions that come in because I have a basketball only a basketball related account so it just makes reconciling a little bit easier and I can always if a parent says oh no I thought I was paid up to here or I paid this amount you've always got the comment there and also the bank the bank transaction um, also, when I receive cash or when I receive an EFT from a, um, a parent after I've reconciled within the cash flow uh, template, I always send a message to them, letting them know when they're paid up to. Um, I just find that I do over communicate, but I, I guess parents also know that, you know, where they're paid up to. So then when I ask them for money again, they're not like, oh, really, Jade? Is it, is it that time again? So I just find just communicating everything and over communicating, then they kind of don't have uh, so many questions about it. Um, I also, when when I'm getting low uh, in our kitty or in our bank account, um, you see a little example here of a message that I will send out to the parents. Um, I just find that letting them know where they were paid up to last time, they go, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely overdue or I am coming up. Um, I haven't had any, any kind of issues with um, parents uh, paying in advance. I understand the last two years has been quite hard um, on some families. So you might get some parents that might not want to pay the $100 up front and that's, that's fine. Um, that can be something that you can, uh, you know, speak to them about and, and work something out between yourselves. Um, you know, as long as most of the parents are paying up front, it, it will be okay if some parents, you know, can maybe only pay weekly or fortnightly. That's like, that's fine. Um, we must make sure that the cash flow spreadsheet is kept up to date and preferably saved uh, in the cloud. Um, if you don't have a cloud option, maybe uh, emailing it to yourself every time it's updated so you've always, uh, you know, got a copy you'd hate to get to the middle of the season and lose it and not know who's paid and 
it yeah it would just be an absolute nightmare so if if you can email it to yourself uh that'd be great or even email it to somebody else or put it in the cloud all good um but just also to let you know that uh, the fdba can audit your cash your cash flow spreadsheet throughout the year so you know a parent might kind of go oh no well i i paid this much and i thought i was paid up till here or just something along uh, you know along those lines so always make sure it's updated make sure you've always got a copy so um you know if jared or well, it won't be Jared, it'll be Bailey. Um, if there is a potential grievance that, um, you know, you're able to email it over to Bailey and, you know, and show, and show uh, you know, all the financials. So that's pretty much it. But if anyone's got any uh, questions about it. Oh, no, no cash. Sorry, Jared, I just saw your yeah. message. Okay. That's right. Bailey, Bailey picked that one up and you just found an email. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So credit card only. Yep. Yep. No cash. So I would encourage team managers to, yeah. to just put that out there now and say no cash unless yep. you're comfortable collecting cash and then still paying on card if you've got enough. Mm. But I think that'd be problematic. So I'd, I'd just do EFT transfers, as you mentioned. And, and when the team pay yeah. option becomes available, um, Bailey and, and the, the team will be, you know, across it because it'll be likely they're exploring it being an option for domestic as well so you're in good hands in terms of who yeah. will, you know talk about that handover uh, if we are to use it for vjbl which we, we need to have it available oh. for, for visiting associations yeah so how sorry so how will that work bailey and jared will that automatically if i say i turn up and i'm saying you know this is for the 41 boys will it already show that it's paid or will i have to show us a receipt or the way team pay works, you can do it from anywhere. So you could be on the court side and just have to pay it there. And okay. Either you pay $125 up front or everyone has to pay their $15 before they get to the bench. You oh, yeah, it's okay. It's up to you how you organize it, but that's the way the system's going to work. Okay. Okay, so you won't have to show proof of um, that you paid for the the team sheet before no, when the, you enter the... the door paper there should be the um, list on the on their computer and be able to just go bang, bang some one voice. Okay. Be okay. Fun. Yeah. Great. That'll be good. All right. Terrific. Thank you, Jade. If uh, if any questions come through, I'll I'll handball them on because yeah, you are the master of this stuff. And um, would it be fair to say quickly, just Jade, that yeah. your 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 calculations there, they're probably that's that's not. You know that's not policy that's not set in stone that's just your guideline over how you're going to do it because some people may want to for the vc game they may want to ask for 20 a week well, so that it gives was, them a, a yeah, cushion that was that was actually i was actually going to email you about that um <laughs> so last year um everyone we most games were 55 and then vc games were 65 we were charging Ten dollars per parent, so um, we were actually, you know, Kitty was maybe say forty-ish dollars every week. So by the time the end of the season came, we had enough to buy the coaches present, do an end of season get together. But with with these new um, set amounts, it kind of kind of uh, stops that. And I was actually going to email Jared because one hundred and forty dollars a week, even if I charge. $15, I'm only kind of getting in kitty $10 per week, which is not, which is not, not right much. because no. in previous seasons, I would, you know, if it was a hot, hot training day, I'd go by the boys, you know, icy poles, you know, when we've played Curran Burra, um, you know, I would put on, out of kitty, I would put on pizza and chips and drinks for the parents and the players of, you know, of both clubs and, um yeah, so this year's a little, like a little bit different. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, you, you almost, you almost want to probably think about. It's probably a personal decision. I don't think it has yeah. to be written in stone this first year because we'll mm. all be learning this year. Yeah, um, and I, I reckon 20, 20 obviously gets you somewhere around sixty in the in the kitty each week, which yeah. is a lot. Yeah. Um, 
but I think it's probably just needs to this year as much as I'd like to sort of make a sort of mandate. It's not going to work for everyone. I think no. it needs to be a team by team basis. Um, mm. And for our VC teams, uh, you may need to just to discuss with your parents and, and see if they're comfortable paying, you know, an upfront amount of whatever it is, whatever the mathematics works out to for yeah. 20 per week. And they yeah. know that at the end of the season, there will be an extra couple of hundred in the kitty. Um, and that can go towards, you know, some sort of a team function or, you know, as long as you're transparent with your family, yeah. so I don't think they'll mind, but we don't want you guys as the team managers being out of pocket. And you, I think you risk that a little bit by, mm. by going with the 15 for the 140. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a potential that, you, you know, one or two players are missing a week um, or well, for two was, or three weeks. Yeah. Well, that was one of my other questions. So normally, let's say a, a, a player had a long-term injury. Normally, we would, going back obviously previous seasons, we would go, okay, well, we'll charge $5 per, per game, you know, if they were out for six weeks. With this $140 a week, we can't do that. Yeah, we can't reduce that's right. Well, yep. we, we can, but then we have to ask the other parents, okay, well, it was costing you this, this amount a week, but now it's going to cost you this amount per week because we're down a player for six weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for this year in particular, while we kind of figure it out, um, it, it would be best to go a little bit over yep. um, as opposed to being under. Mm -hmm. um, and generally, and Ash has just asked the question, and I, I think you asked it last year as well, Ash, you know, charging um uh yeah it's a tough one too should we charge families that can't participate due to new vaccination rules um uh, yeah and again that's it's a it's a discussion you can have but i i would think that this year it probably probably not um and i would i would tend to to go over a little bit for those players but you know mm -hmm. you could ask them and and speak to those parents and see whether or not they'd be willing to contribute um, but yeah, it's a really, really difficult area with the vaccination rules, and I don't have a clear answer for that. Sorry, Ash. All right. Uh, moving on, Jade, can you unshare and I'll get back to this. If anyone has any yeah. questions about finance, um, feel free to chuck them back up and, and we'll, we'll be able to answer later because it is a really important um you know it is a really important part of, of being the team manager and obviously we're talking about families monies and uh, you know it, it is important that we're on top of those things so any questions you've got feel free to shoot them through to, to myself or bailey or even jade um you know and, and we'll do our best to to answer those questions and, and sort of support you through that process okay so moving on uh, just finding which screen to share again here there we go Okay, so that's our team managers pack. As Jade mentioned, uh, I'll get that out to you guys no later than tomorrow morning with all the updated dates in the cash flow and the scoring roster and your code of conduct. Now, that code of conduct, we generally set a date for return by the first grading game, but I think this year we've got enough on our plate. If you're able to, um, if you're able to to get that back to us, probably by the end of grading phase one with everyone signed and and everything, then that would be fine for this year. Because that's going to be, um, yeah, that's obviously that's forty-two teams, and and getting all those players together and getting those signed is going to be difficult given the circumstances. So communication, uh, obviously, you know, it, it's up to you guys how you want to communicate. And um, usually we have Cindy Shacklock come in and present about this, but there's obviously a range of, of different channels you can use, and and. Um, Feel free to jump in here at any stage, Mel or Jade. It, it could be a WhatsApp. Uh, a lot of people use Facebook. We don't love Facebook as a messenger or, you know, you might have a group on Facebook. It's okay. It's fine. But having that attachment to people's personal kind of accounts is, is, a, bit, is a bit iffy. But I understand that it is kind of the most popular medium for people to use and probably one of the easiest and most accessible ones. Not everyone has WhatsApp. Some people choose to use Team App. We don't endorse Team App across the entire program, but if you choose to set up a Team App, you can. Um, there's a range of apps you can use to to um, to communicate with your teams. Our NBL One men's team uses Heja or Heja H E J A. Um, Paulie Groat set that up. Yeah, there you go, Bree. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, that that one works, and you can actually schedule in um, a calendar and a schedule, and you can put all your trainings in. And once you get the fixtures, you can actually upload your games and any 
um, team meetings or family events or anything like that. Um, Tanya uses Heja as well. So that's another really useful app um, and, and, and a messaging kind of an app that you can use. So feel free to, to try that one or WhatsApp or, you know, Facebook is, is the old faithful. Yeah. Can I just say one thing about Facebook, uh, Jared? Yeah, um, when I when I set up the group and I'm obviously adding new people that I'm obviously not friends with on uh, Facebook, when I send them uh, the message, I always say to them to add you to the group, we need to be friends on Facebook, but please do not feel that you need to keep me as a friend after I add you, please feel free to unfriend me. So I take that because people kind of go, well, I don't really know you. So that's what I do in my text messages to them just to make it you know, that they don't have to stay my friend, stay as my friend on Facebook, that's fine. It just kind of gives them that that kind of out, and like as you were saying with, you know, personal stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good call. Always good to communicate that stuff. And just so you know, we have to stay friends on Facebook after I leave Jade, so yeah. there's no one following. Or <laughs> yeah. Um, grievance policy, I think uh, the majority of you are aware of this and it's available in our handbook. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty uh, common sense, and that is that if you have any issues, uh, you know, throughout the season, whoever that might be with, could be a you know, could be another parent, could be an issue with the team manager, could be an issue with the coach. Um, there's basically four steps to work through, and the first step is at, at an appropriate time and in in, in an appropriate manner. Uh, please communicate with that person directly. Um, and if you need support in doing that, you can bring in a third party. If the matter can't be resolved, um, if it's parent to parent or it's parent to coach, then the next step would be to involve the team manager, which is, which is you, obviously you guys in this meeting, um, and you would become that third party to manage that. Um, if it is parent to coach, I'll just say this now, even though I'm not necessarily speaking to parents tonight, I'm speaking to team managers. We went through it on new parent info night please don't speak directly to coaches after games, um, you know, set up a time with them an alternate time to, to have a chat to them when it's not so emotive, try and sleep on things. If you're not happy with something that's happened. And I think that's just a general rule for any kind of a grievance, whether that's parent to parent, parent to coach, parent to team manager. Um, so, yeah, so that's that second step would be to go to your team manager. If the team manager and, and the other two parties can't resolve the grievance in the next or the third step is to get the, the coaching coordinators involved, um, which is obviously Beck as our junior girls coordinator and Scott as our, um, as our, as our junior, bo uh, junior boys coordinator. If then that can't be resolved and, and Scott and the team manager and two parents or coach and parent or whoever, or it could be a coaching group, sit down and, and can't reach a happy sort of a medium, then that's when someone from the op office would step in. Um, and that's when that would either be in, in previous years, that's been myself, um, at times, that's been uh, an FDBA board member or potentially even, you know, someone like Wayne as a CEO. Um, but from here on forward, it will most likely be Bailey um, and, and could also be um, Daniel Spangler, who you all know, uh, our media and comms manager is taking on more of a, taking on more responsibility with, um, with regards to some of those roles. So that's our grievance policy. If you want to look at that in what is in the uh, uh, player parent handbook, it's important that you communicate that to your parents. So I think it's really, really important to establish that early on. Uh, VJBL communication must go through the FDBA office. That is really important. And, and I know it sounds trivial, but we, if you think about it, the, the importance of this meeting for us tonight and the reason why we're, you know, we're, we're, we're 40 minutes in and, and I'm hoping to wrap things up in the next sort of 15, 20 minutes for you guys. But the importance of the team manager meeting is that, for Bailey moving forward and for me previously and the committee members and the working group, we communicate with 42 people, right? So 42 team managers or 43 if there's double ups here and there um, instead of 430, you know, or 420 people. You know, it, it makes a massive, massive difference. Um, and it's the same for the BJBL. It works exactly the same. They've got something like 140, 140, uh, 150 associations as opposed to thousands of teams. So they communicate directly with the delegate, which will be from next week onwards will be Bailey. 
Um, so any any questions you have of the VJBL, if you can't find answers on the VJBL website in the rules of operations or any of the other policies that are, that are quite easy to find on the VJBL website, and again, our handbook and our frequently asked questions regularly links to those pages, um, any questions need to be submitted via Bailey. All right, uh, uniform and merchandise update, really quick one. As you know, our final fitting day prior to Christmas, we, we may have some after Christmas, but our final fitting day prior to Christmas is this Sunday, uh, 8 a.m. till 11 a.m. It's really important that any new players or any returning players or any transferring players that haven't yet had their uniform fitted and ordered get in to that session, get into that fitting at some stage um, because that order will be placed very, very quickly because the turnaround time is around five to six weeks now, unfortunately sublimated and coming from China. And we want to make sure everyone is 100% kitted out and ready to go for, for grading phase two. We know that there's going to be a few, you know, clash, clash strips and blood kits and things like that floating around in uh, grading phase one. Um, but you know, VJBL is pretty lenient through grading phase one. As long as they've got a number on the top and there's not clashes and things like that, you'll see a lot of associations will have some different uh, different outfits going around in phase one. It's just, it's just the way it is, unfortunately, every year, let alone a year uh, coming out of lockdown. Um, merchandise is still available. Obviously, I know you know we're, we're running low on stock, and if anyone saw me or Sue in there on Friday or Sunday, you know that we were sort of scrambling and. Um, Lauren did a, an amazing job. Our merchandise coordinator did an amazing job making sure we had enough training gear. Um, but it was really difficult if you put yourself in her shoes in June, July, trying to you know look forward to a uh, full VJBL season and order X amount of hoodies and X amount of backpacks and things like that as we're entering a lockdown. Um, the financial sort of strain on the association would have been vast um, and we, we needed to prioritize things and we prioritized training uniforms so um, there is training uniforms hopefully everyone's been able to get in and purchase them uh, we are low on you know kids sizes of hoodies and and we are you know out of backpacks and things like that which is not ideal um, but there will be an order coming in the new year and and I want to stress as well because this question has come up and I answered it incorrectly um, while I was under the pump on Friday night there won't be um there won't be participant packs this year, unfortunately. And the reason for that is that our new finance system, Vend and Tyro, um, which tracks our stock take and all of that, it doesn't have the ability to discount items in a bulk pack. Um, it just, for whatever reason, doesn't have that functionality. Um, so unfortunately, we won't be able to provide those participant packs, so to speak. Um, so you may have a couple of parents that might be a bit disgruntled about that because I think on Friday before Lauren had pointed that out to me, I said, oh, when we get all the other gear in, we'll just, you know, you know, we'll just get you the rest of the gear at a discounted price. Um, that will be for Lauren to manage when she's when she's back on deck. Um, so yeah, so I apologize for that. But yeah, at this stage, participant packs um, may not occur and uh, the rest of that gear should be available after Christmas. So the coaches and team managers screening, I think all but one team now has team managers set. Um, and I know that there's some apologies, but most of you are in here tonight. Um, so please get that done ASAP. And unfortunately, you guys are going to be the contact now for the office, the predominant contact. Um, for, for contact with coaches, Bailey and Daniel and the team will go through Beck and Scott. Um, but, but for these type of things, for getting screenings done and things like that, we will lean on you guys to to sometimes chase up the coaches and assistant coaches and any players we need stuff from. So please make sure that all your your, your head coaches and all your assistant coaches have done this screening. Um, it needs to be submitted by this Friday. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty sharp deadline with grading starting the week after. Um, there's a jot form this year. So we've tried to make it as automated and as simple mm. as possible for everyone. You can download each of those forms. You can download the stat deck. You can download the code of conduct. Um, and you can just take a photo. You can sign it, take it to your pharmacy or wherever you need to go to get it signed by the Justice of the Peace. Take a photo of it on your smartphone and just upload it straight to the JOT form and fill out the other fields. And then that'll be really easy for Bailey or myself on, on Friday when we have to then, you know, um, retrieve all that information and submit it to VJBL. School bench, shot clock education, um, all this information is available on our website, on our Junior Blues page in a news story, but I'll make 
the notes from this meeting and this presentation. I'll save it as a PDF and it will be sent out with the recording of this meeting as well. So don't feel like if you're madly writing stuff down, that's that's fine if that's how you retain information, but I will also send this out. So we do have score bench and shot clock sessions available this Sunday and also next Thursday. Um, we've been receiving some questions about who needs to do shot clock and things like that. Um, that information is available on the rules of operation. Um, uh, my understanding is I think it's it's VC, but I don't believe it's under 12s VC. No. I think, no, no it's not no. under 12s VC. So uh, no. Kirsten, if you're in here, Tim, Timmy Wells is team manager. I incorrectly responded to an email this morning. I apologize. Um, your parents in, in under 12s, if they qualify for VC, uh, won't need to, to, to learn the shot clock just yet, but they can if they like. So um, that starts from under 14s. Under 14s, I believe is 14... 14 only. It starts from 14, like the 14. clock starts from 14 at half court. Half court, starts yeah. At half court. Yeah. yeah. And then from 16s upwards, it's the full 24. Um, but no VJBL resets to 14. Um, it's all, it's all just the 24. So it's a bit, it's it's a bit more simple than the senior basketball. Um, but Tam Philippe, who's our technical officials sort of um, officer, she'll she'll take uh, she'll take everyone through that over those two sessions. There's no need to book in. We'll we'll just probably be running that um, on Sunday. We'll probably run that in the foyer um, and possibly out on court. And then on the Thursday, it will most likely be in the boardroom. So registration fees, uh, invoices will be coming out for these this week. Uh, obviously, we need to make sure that all our players are registered. So if you can please double check that, that would be great. I know there's a few stragglers, but overall, mm -hmm. I would say it's been really good. Um, if, if we can get that registration done, um, because yeah, the, the, the remainder of the fees will be collected via invoice. Um, and, and feel free to contact myself or Bailey directly if there's anyone that you're aware of that will need to be put on a payment plan or that will possibly make those types of requests. Um, obviously, with what we talked about with the vaccination status and update, that may play a role. Um, and, and we're happy to be lenient with those things. If there are players or families that maybe know that they're not going to be playing prior to Christmas, you know, we're probably not going to chase them for money before Christmas. Um, you know, let's let's be realistic and let's let's apply common sense here. Um, but otherwise, those are the dates that, that those instalments are due. And, and for anyone that was a part of the club last year, you know that, you know, the invoicing system through zero, it's quite flexible. And all you need to do is make an EFT transfer and um, quote your invoice as a reference. Um, and it just matches up directly in, uh, in our zero system. So... Um, if there are, we don't want to have 150 payment plans, but if there is a need for it, as we, you know, we want to make sure that it's affordable for all of our families and, and we're not, you know, we're not breaking the bank. We want to, we don't want there to be barriers for our, for our athletes and our families to be able to participate in, in being a blues family. Um, they just need to communicate with us and let us know that. A quick question here. Um, Erica, good question. I, I, we do have visibility on that. Um, so we will, we are planning as we work through that invoice process to provide updates to team managers for anyone that hasn't registered to team. So um, yeah, if, if you're not sure, probably just wait um, until tomorrow afternoon, maybe Friday afternoon, but we will make sure that all team managers are aware of any players that aren't registered prior to grading phase one, because they will not be able to take the court um, next Friday. If they're not registered, they won't be in the system. So we will get that information to you as, as soon as possible. All right. Oh, another question. Uh, Southern Penn, no, we don't manage that tournament. So we can't see which players have and haven't registered that. You'll probably need to contact them for that. Okay, team manager's uniform, really quickly. Uh, Lauren's done a, a body of work on this again and ordering stuff so that it's there, ready to go. Um, team managers will receive a polo, which, which they're available now. Um, and, and also uh, this year, we're moving towards providing our coaches and team managers with a jacket. Um, not like last year, the, um, you know, not like last year, the sort of pros did, mm -hmm. like you see in the merch store. Um, we want something a little bit more robust and a bit warmer um, and something that you can wear over your polo and it still look quite presentable and, and official so something pretty similar to you, you might have seen the office staff walking around in the soft shell kind of jackets the black ones with fdba 
um, it's actually going to be almost exactly the same, just in navy blue and with blues, you know, across the chest or on the left. Um, and those essentially will be provided every three years. Now, obviously, if you grow out of your polo or, you know, it gets ripped or anything like that, you just need to contact Lauren and let her know. But in order for us to maintain sort of budgeting, because the jackets are about $75 each, are quite expensive, but we've gone away from the track pants this year and thought it's better to provide um, a jacket. Um, and then, you know, essentially our team managers and coaches would be expected to wear black slacks, any type of black slacks. It can even be um, presentable black trackies if, if need be um, and runners is, is fine. But a lot of coaches and teams will decide that they want to wear the full sort of black, almost black dress pants and dress shoes. And that's okay as well. And the polo and the jacket will go really nicely with either of those kind of ensemble. We think big word ensembles um yeah if you don't have a polo um please please feel free to, to pop in this sunday there, there is uh, lauren's assured me there's plenty in stock um so please pop in uh, mel correct me if i'm wrong but i think there's a few in there still for, for team managers and coaches to grab yep. um yep perfect and um yeah so so get in there and, and grab it doesn't help for this friday but hopefully everyone um will be fitted out in something, you know, official for, for next Friday night's first grading game, which is a terrific effort by, by Lauren because we're usually scrambling for those as well. Um, I don't have any dot points for this, but I just wanted to touch on it because we do get a few questions every year. And again, Bailey will be more the subject matter expert on this. He might be able to, to jump in and we get a few questions because it is compulsory for all of our players, um, you know, particularly in the 12s, the 14s and then the 16s by 16s top age we get a little bit more lenient um but definitely in the 12s and 14s and those younger age groups it's, it's definitely compulsory for for all athletes to be participating in the fdba domestic competitions now that can be uh that can be in a calendar year so don't panic if you've got athletes or you've got families coming to you and saying i don't play in a domestic team right now they've just been selected in a team our summer season has started they don't need to scramble and try and get into a team they can if they'd like to and they can reach out to us and our team can try and find places for them but but by the winter competition um which starts in term two they, they would need to be um making contact and by that stage they should know their teammates pretty well if they're a new player or a transferring player they should be able to find a domestic club um, that will take them on and, and fit them into a team somewhere. So we do have exemptions for that. Uh, previously, any exemptions needed to be approved by myself. Um, moving forward, those exemptions will need to be approved by Bailey and, and the competitions team. And those exemptions are generally for, um, you know, high-performance athletes that might be in state programs, ST, SDP or NPP or being selected in state teams and are doing a lot of extra weekend training or early mornings throughout the week. Um, you know, we won't grant exemptions for things like, oh, you know, my kid made a blues team, which is great, but still wants to play with all these mates at Mornington, you know, and it clashes and things like that. We'll finish the season with your mates in Mornington, but you'll need to join a team at Frankston. You can play in both by all, and by all means, you can play in both competitions and we'd support that. But um, yeah, they, they'll need to play in the, in the FDBA competition the reason for i'll explain it and this is probably the easiest way to look at it is is our blues our franks and blues program represents the association it doesn't actually play in the association you represent the association so you can't represent in our our vision or our value of it is that you can't represent the association if you don't actually play in it um, at some stage throughout the year so it's important for us to have that um that that you know clarified with families um, and there's a financial element to it as well it's not all about money but our bjbl fees are the lowest in victoria um, and it's because of things like this that we want our our you know our rep athletes playing in our domestic competitions and raising the standard of those domestic competitions as well so we, we place a fair bit of value in that okay moving forward mouth guards i might hand over to you mel if you wanted to talk about mouth guards uh, you yeah, know, thanks, Jared. Hi, everybody. Um, the details are on the screen. Every year, um, we invite Michael, um, who does our mask guards, to come in on a Sunday to um, make it more convenient for families to get mask guards done. 
mouth guards are by no way um, compulsory. It's a personal preference. Um, you know, some kids that are playing footy already get mouth guards for footy, but um, we just thought it'd be easier and convenient to bring Michael in um, for those that are interested to have it for basketball. Um, I mean, it's supposed to be a non-contact sport, but you know, some kids prefer to play with them. So um, we've scheduled in Sunday the 6th of February from nine to 12. He will be at Frankston. Um, he can't be at multiple venues. So those that are at EMC, I know training sort of, you know, will sort of work around those times, but you can come before or after training. Um, he'll be there. He will have, he generally has um, asked for a $20 cash deposit. Um, I spoke to him the other day and he is fairly certain he'll have his high caps machine because um, mouth guards can be claimed through your private health insurance. Um, so he'll take a $20 cash deposit on the day. If the high caps machine is there, he'll process it all and you won't have to pay that. Um, otherwise, um, $20 deposit on the day. And when you pick up the mouth guard at his um, surgery in Frankston, um, the address is up there on the screen and we'll remind you of that as well. It'll be on your receipt anyway. Um, he will return that $20 cash and he can process it through your through the high caps machine. If you don't have private health insurance, um, a single coloured mouth guard is $88 um, and that's payable on the day um, or when you pick it up, uh, he'll, he'll let you know. Um, he does the club colours, which is blue and white or any other two colour combinations and that's $98. Um, I've had... Um, mouth guards for my kids and I get it done every year because their mouth does change as they grow. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, something that we always do. And yeah, um, what they do is um, Michael also um, donates um, a percentage of the sales on that day back to Frankston. So um, we use that for the under 18 tour when we've had the trip for the American trip. So um, yeah, and um, he's been he's been doing it since I've been there, and that's probably about over seven years. So, and he was there before I got there. So, um, yeah, um, everyone sort of seems to be happy. So, um, but if you have any questions, you can just shout out, and I'm happy to answer them. But yeah, um, all the details will be there, and we'll remind everybody closer to the date as well. Um, but yeah, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Awesome. Thank you, Mel. Yeah, really valuable and, and really um, excellent each year to have uh, Michael in the stadium providing that opportunity for our families. It's really important, obviously, and, uh, yeah, we, we love it. And, um, yeah, it's terrific. So thanks for organising that for us. No worries. Um, all right, we're at the tail end here, guys. I know we're creeping on uh, up on an hour, so I apologise, but there is there's a lot of information to get through. This will be recorded and will be made available and sent out probably tomorrow with the, with the team manager's kit as well as the, the presentation itself. Um, so last couple of slides, venue passes, not a big one. Uh, I, I wouldn't stress too much. Everyone's QR coding and stuff anyway these days, but it is something that the VJBL like to do. It's a part of the screening process and they will send out personalized um, passes for team managers, coaches and assistant coaches once they've once we've submitted the screening. Um, and that's just a part of that screening process so that team managers, coaches and assistant coaches don't have to pay at the venues. But, um, you know, you'll also have to sign in at the venues. I assume that that hasn't changed either. You'll, you'll realise that mm. you'll, you'll get to the stadium and there'll be someone sitting there at the door or you would have seen maybe Sue before, Sue Humber sitting there with a, um, with a big fancy A3 sheet at Frankston and, and you, you know, you sign that. Um, and that's, again, that's just a part of that sort of member protection that the VJBL is, um, is really strong on. Um, so for any new team managers, be prepared for that as well. And, and that will probably, uh, that will begin in grading. So yeah, you'll have to sign in and both your coaches will have to sign in. Um, and they'll also have to display their pass as they come through. And um, again, I doubt we'll get any this side of Christmas, but in the past, we've racked up some pretty significant fines. When coaches don't sign in, it's $10 every time a coach, assistant coach or team manager doesn't sign in. Um, now, we won't be too petty. We'll probably absorb a, a few of those um, at, at certain points during the year. But if we start to have repeat offenders, um, I'm sure Bailey will start shooting off invoices to uh, to people because he'll start receiving invoices for coaches not signing in. So, yeah, that's just something to be aware of. Um, Junior Blues photo dates. Uh, these, again, these aren't set in stone, but off the back of Mel's hard work, I thought let's reach out to Sports Trend, our, uh, our trusted photography uh, specialists that, that do our photos each year. 
and uh, and pencil in some dates. We I think we did them the same day as the mouth guard fittings last year as well, Mel. And it's the it's the yeah. first Sunday that back. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah, so it makes it a big day, but if everyone's coming into the stadium for the photos anyway, it sort of makes sense. And we try and communicate that date as, as far ahead of time as we possibly can. Um, so that's that date's penciled in with Sports Trend and obviously with us as well. And um, that'll likely be, we'll, we'll try and clear court two for that day because we did it in the foyer last year and the feedback was that the traffic flow was a bit difficult. Um, we try and get everyone done on that Sunday. We try and get every team through on that Sunday as best as possible um, but we have the Tuesday available for overflow or for any kids that can't or families that can't make it on that that um, Sunday can come in then on the Tuesday and have an individual photo taken to be photoshopped in so we don't hopefully we don't have too many absences and things like that um, but more details will be communicated uh, a bit closer to that date um, so yeah so yeah we can pencil those in with your families and let them know if you're using here and apps like that just to just to let them know but that's the first i think it's the first sunday and tuesday after school goes back in the new year essentially and after the australia Day tournament so everyone should be back at training for a couple of weeks by that stage and, and into the swing of things so the final slide and final item on the agenda i don't know how, that, how big that is for you guys but obviously um, the VJBL calendar is available up on the VJBL website. It's on our website as well. Um, really important to, to just understand these dates. And uh, we haven't communicated, and Jade raised a really good point before the meeting tonight. We haven't communicated set training end and start dates. Um, the reason for that is partly laziness on my behalf, but also experience in knowing that coaches will often like want to want to stray from that quite a bit um you know so we could set it you know the last grading game here is friday the 17th and we know school finishes on that date but i know that i'll have coaches and possibly even the coaching coordinators because of the year we've all had saying oh can we get in on the sunday you know can we still have a training on the sunday the 19th and things like that so i find it difficult to communicate a, a concrete date but you can use this as a general guide. Um, and that school holidays date there, that grading phase two restart in the new year. Obviously, um, the, the weekend prior to that, you've got the Australia Day tournament. So you probably want to work a week back from that, at least a week back from that for, for a couple of trainings before that Australia Day tournament, if you are planning on entering and yeah. you can communicate that to your families. Generally, we don't train during school holidays. That's just, we just don't train um, on the Sundays and the Tuesdays. So our last, um, you know, prior to school holidays, the last training would be that Tuesday night. And then you play on that Friday and we give everyone a full kind of two weeks off. But again, as I said, there are outliers um, and we provide flexibility for, for certain teams. And we're lucky that we can do that because we manage our stadiums. Um, so we can provide some flexibility. All right. Just with, that, just with training, oh, sorry, yep. just with training, yep. um, everyone, um, can we start, can you all start keeping a training attendance of your players yeah, sure. just for uh, casual contacts, uh, et cetera? Parents should be all QR coding in, um, but if you can just start keeping an attendance of which players are there and which players aren't, just in case, uh, that'd be great. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Jade. Uh, good point. I think that is mentioned, I don't know in that much detail, but it is mentioned in the administration part of the roles of the okay. team managers, but it's more it's more important than ever. So I'm glad you raised that, um, especially at our external venues and things like that, because we know that QR coding can be a bit, um, is a bit difficult, particularly in the, you know, the, the stadiums, we don't have a COVID marshal app for trainings and things like that. So we want to make sure we're doing the right things. Um, particularly as we're trying to be as flexible as possible for all our members to make sure everyone can stay involved. Um, so if we do those little things and, and QR code in, hopefully we can stay on top of any um, potential, you know, cases that may occur in the near future. So um, that's it in terms of the official part of the meeting and, and any agenda items that we needed to get through. I know it's been over an hour, so I really appreciate uh, everyone staying on and giving up their time this evening. I hope it's been informative um this recording will go up um so if you need to refer back to it the presentation will go up if you've got any questions um please feel free to um you know type them in the chat or i'm happy for people to sort of you know unmute themselves or maybe type them in the chat and then i'll ask you to unmute yourself if you like but otherwise if, if everyone wants to get back to their evening please do um over the next 
four or five business days. I hope to see you all at some stage. I know we're at different venues Friday. I'll try and be around. I uh, can't be there Sunday morning, but I'll try and be there next Tuesday. Um, but just on a personal note, um, thank you everyone for everything, uh, particularly those team managers that are in there third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh or eighth year. Um, thank you so much. And, and I know you're in great hands with Bailey and and, um, and I'll still see you around. So uh, thank you. And, and if uh, anyone's got any questions, fire them away. Otherwise, uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jared. No worries. See you, Shelley. See ya. <clears throat> uh, we've got questions i just check the chat oh no they're just old ones oh we might have a new one what have we got here oh it's just jody oh good on you jody <laughs> should have unmuted yourself what are you doing what are you doing here? You unmuted yourself and answered some questions for me i she could have actually yeah bloody hell I didn't realise you were in here. I thought no, you weren't going to be in no, here. No, well, she, well, she was she's a domestic. Yeah, she was I'm sitting, I'm sitting at Karam Downs. So, yeah. in, in <laughs> so I'm on my phone. So I I'm really like, if I unmute, it's going to be, and then I've just been getting the coaches to do their forms and freaking out because I don't know how to sign stat decks and things. So. <laughs> well, you've got to have, you've got to have two coppers on your team like we do. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> It was good, actually. Oh, you can see me now. Oh, there it's, she is. Hey, Jodie. Yeah, here. I'm, so, yes, yeah, so I'm just at, at training. <laughs> good work. So I'm, I'm spreading stuff out to the parents as I'm there going about what they need to do. So, yeah, all good. <laughs> all right. Oh, I'll let you yeah, go. Let me get back into the noise. No worries. Thanks, thanks Jodie. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Jody. No worries, Jodie. Talk to you soon. See ya. See ya. Um, Kylie raised a good point. I totally forgot to mention the team manager WhatsApp. Um, I will get that fired up pretty soon as well. Um, yeah. So I'll get the WhatsApp fired up. I forgot to mention that in the um, in the meeting, but yeah, and I'll, I'll set that up and then I'll make Bailey the admin, um, and then I'll stay I'll stay in it for a couple of weeks. But as you guys know better than anyone, I don't really have much to say in there anyway. You guys generally jump on the questions before I get a chance to. You guys are the subject <laughs> matter experts. Yeah, you you know what's going on better than me. So Kylie, I hope yeah you're still online here. So yeah, there, there's not a team manager app, but there is a communicator. Like we just started a a messenger a couple of years ago, and and I just found it to be relatively handy. Uh, probably more on the like training nights and and particularly on the game nights when there was like an emergency or team manager was stuck at a stadium and, and didn't know what to do. And usually Jade, Mel or Cindy would jump on and go, oh, I've, that's happened to me before. Here's what you got to do or here's what we've done in the past. And um, it just, yeah, it can get a bit hectic in there at times when there's announcements and lockdowns and things like that. It wasn't a lot of fun. But, um, no, it wasn't. But, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's actually but, really helpful. But, I, I find it really good for all the new newies as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's, yeah, and, and everyone's really good in there. Everyone's really respectful. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so Kylie, we will start. I'll probably start that WhatsApp tomorrow. I've got everyone's details now and all phone numbers and stuff ready to go. So I'll set that up and then hand it over to Bailey. Yeah. And there's no, and there's no, uh, no stupid questions or no silly questions, Kylie, in that WhatsApp uh, team managers thing. Don't, don't be scared to ask anything, even if you think it's silly. Yeah. Oh, you don't know me well enough yet, but yeah, there could be lots of silly things. <laughs> oh, yeah, good you know, ask away because that's what we're, you know, that's what we're all there for is to, uh, you know, help each other out. So ask away. Can, any, can anyone shoot me an email stating what sort of things I should have with me as a team manager on game night? I know, um, like, from the other yeah. night I needed tape and scissors. Um, If you... Yeah, you can. Uh, I'll send you. I'll send you a message. I'll give you my number, and maybe we can have a quick chat. And I'll just let you know what I what I bring on game night. Uh, awesome. Know, Thank what, you. What I have in my folder. What I yeah. So let's do that. Awesome. Thank you. No, no Thanks, worries. Thanks, Jared. No worries, Kylie. Thank you. Thanks for taking on the role. No worries. Perfect. All right, thanks for that, Jade and Mel and no Bailey. Anyone else that's still on, if there's no any worries. final questions, I don't think 
there will be uh, any more, but um, everyone's got my details and we'll soon have Bailey's details. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bailey. <laughs> Can't wait to get your mobile number, Bailey. <laughs> I'm not giving that one to you. <laughs> hey, it's on the WhatsApp. Yeah. Sorry, but they're going to oh, have it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Just embrace it, but I just embraced it. I just went, you know what? Everyone can have my number, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I love a chat. Just love it. I just love a chat. But Bailey's, Bailey's much nicer than me. Like he's a, far more personable, a lot, lot friendlier. So yeah, it should be, you guys are, yeah, you're in for a treat, I think. Give him a couple of weeks and he won't be, don't worry. Yeah, it's just about and just be, there'll be an implosion. You'll all be right. Fine. All right. Yeah, he'll, he'll be right. Thanks, thank you very much, Jade, Mel. Um, no thanks worries, for no worries. and thanks for your uh, thanks for your constant support and input. Um, not just this year, but over the many years, I really appreciate it. And I hope to no catch worries. up with you both very soon. We'll be yeah, seeing well, you around. We will. Yeah, yeah you're not right. you're not rid of me yet. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank thanks. you. Thanks, everyone. See, See you guys. Bye. 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 All right. Oh, I thought I ended.